Okay. <laughs> you ready? ready? All right, everybody, Jay Emanion here at the MPC Photo Gym, and I'm here doing the 2020 Road to the Olympia yet again with... Dr. Jessica Wilson, IFBB Bikini Pro. How are you? We're feeling great. You know, this is the busiest Road to the Olympia day I've had in, in this last two months. Yes, it has been. It is, it is a full house, guys. Absolutely full house behind the scenes yeah. here. Yeah, you're, you're like the, the fourth of five athletes over here today. That is right. And there are still three in the building. So packed house. This is a very busy man, guys. Hardest working photographer in the business, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. So how are you feeling going to the Olympia in Las Vegas? I am so excited for this Olympia. I mean, obviously, I'd be excited for any Olympia, but this is closer to home, so that's always fantastic. It's going back to Las Vegas, um, where, of course, we know we had to make arrangements to have it elsewhere. Um, and so it's really good to kind of bring it back home um, and be a part of this event. because it's, It feels like it's a comeback for the Olympia back in that. Yeah. Now, did you, did you ever go to any Olympias when they were in Las Vegas? I did, yes. I actually worked a couple of them. Um, back in 2016, I worked the expo with uh, Lipoxyderm. Back in 2019, I did interviews for the Olympia Amateur backstage. So I got a real behind the scenes look at that Las Vegas Olympia back in 2019. And then, well, 2020, we all know what happened there. Yeah, yeah. yeah but at least we had an Olympia. Yes. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. So, um, so yeah, it's just seeing, it's, it's fun. It's exciting. It's back home, but it's still going to be very new and very refreshed is, is what I gather. So I'm very excited. Yeah. So now you're, you're probably going to be in the largest ever bikini Olympia. What is there, like 230 girls or what? A million. Um, <laughs> well, I believe there were, I think, 72 bikini pro shows this year. And we had a longer window to qualify as well. I believe 13 months, I think. Um, so I think a little more. A little more. Yeah, I think a little bit more. I think 14. You're so right. Same difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And believe it, that, that, that month, that's four more contests. It makes a difference. But um, so, of course, more contests to qualify and more time to qualify. More time for improvements is the way I think about it. But um, it is the largest lineup. Um, it's I think it's six. I haven't done the count, guys, but the official list is out. I think it's close to 60 or maybe a little bit higher. OK, so the official list is, is out of who qualified. That does not mean that everybody on that list will be on stage because people Things happen, life happens, injuries, illness, whatever. But we had like 60, some, like you said, 60 plus qualify. That's, yeah, I think like 62 or something. Um, and that's absolutely true. Not, you know, life happens and, you know, as unfortunate as it is, yeah, some, some don't make it. I hope everybody makes it because, yeah. my gosh, we work so hard and there's so much excitement going into this and it, it would be a shame to not make it. But life happens. Um, but either way, it's still going to be the biggest lineup. And uh, this is the first time you're going to have four Bikini Olympia champions in the contest. So if you don't know who they are, of course, there's Jen, who's the, who's the reigning champion. You've got Ashley, you've got Issa, and you have the return of Janet. Mm -hmm, the return of Janet. And we also have Miss Erin Stern, so who's another... Yeah, she's a figure Olympia figure. champion. Yeah. But still, yeah. you know, who's made a, a successful transition to Bikini. Mm, that's right. So it's really exciting to have those champions on stage rivaling, you know, against each other. Um, cause it's obviously that's where all the action happens. It's on stage. We're all such good friends behind the scenes. I want people to know that like we get along, we love each other and we support each other. But of course the battle happens on the stage. So it's going to be, it's going to be a big deal. This Olympia, they all are, but this one's. Well, there's, there's so many storylines here in the Olympia with every division. I mean, we're lucky today, as you know, as we have Derek Lunsford here, which is probably the biggest story in the Mr. Olympia right now. That's right. And guys, what a gentleman. So I just got to meet Derek for the first time. And wow, what a humble gentleman he is. So I'm really, really excited um, to see what he's going to do in two weeks. Yeah. So this is, I mean, every division is huge, but I think the men's physique has the most. I think they have over 70. No way. Okay, I've got to check those numbers because, of course, the bikini girls want to be the ones that are all extra. But it seems like men's physique kind of try to beat us. Well, so I think I think the I think the reason there's not more in bikini 
as I think everybody could, can thank Ashley Coltwasser. <laughs> thank, thanks, Ashley, the gatekeeper. <laughs> Um, but no, that it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah, there could have been more competitors in the bikini lineup. But of course, we've had a lot of athletes, um, my colleagues that have won repeated shows this year. So right. So listen, I was I've been bringing this up in basically almost every interview is that I hear bikini pros complaining about Ashley doing so many contests and why she keep doing them because she's qualified for life and. My response is, if you can't beat her in one of these contests, what do you think you're going to do in the Olympia? You've got to, you've got to get certain, you know, get through certain things to get to be in a call, just to be in a call out with her. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's fantastic that athletes like Ashley Kaltwasser and, and any other athlete continually competes as long as their health is maintained in great standing, of course, because that's what this is about. Why wouldn't she compete? Why wouldn't she? It's it's her it's her goal in her life and it's her job. And why not? Why take that away? And I will say, I've come in second to Ashley. I've been in that top call out with Ashley. And honestly, it's made me better. So when you are on stage with a competitor as esteemed as Ashley is. Still the only three-time bikini Olympia champion. Correct. And the most winningest female bodybuilding athlete with 33 yeah. titles, I think. 30, oh, something like that. Sorry, Ashley. But upper 30, mid 30s, um, you know, to be on stage with someone of that caliber and that experience is huge. Like, you've got to learn something from that. I look at it as why wouldn't you want to compete against one of the best if you want to win the Olympia, right? Exactly, exactly. And she's always maintained that she's never had an undefeated season. I always point to this year's Pittsburgh Pro. She was the defending champion, and she didn't win it again this year. So it's not like, you know, she goes out and wins every contest. I mean, other, other competitors come in. I've seen her getting, I've seen her lose to rookies, making their pro debut. Okay, so, but I said, it's funny that, you know, Issa did a couple of contests this year, who's qualified for life, okay, but nobody complained when they lost to her. Nope, and I was actually in that competition, okay. um, Patriots Challenge, yeah. and, I, and it was the two of them, it was Issa and it was Ashley, and they were battling it out, battling it out, and Issa took it at that, at that particular show, but yeah, that's also, you know, thinking about Issa, yeah, she's qualified for life, so is Janet. Janet hopped into Pittsburgh and New York, and and why not, guys? Remember, this is competitive bodybuilding. It's not a for most of us. It's not just a one time. You know, you're done. This is our career. So competing is what we do. Yeah, I mean, we had um, in the Pittsburgh Pro, we had we had Ashley and Janet, two bikini champions, but we had five Arnold bikini champions also. Yes, we, yes, yes, we did. Well, I wasn't there, but right. yes, you did. Um, so again, a huge show. I mean, I always saw the Pittsburgh pro, uh, you know, the New York pro kind of like, those are many Arnold's and many Olympias. And that's truly what they turn out to be, um, which is incredible. So, so 2023 Pittsburgh pro, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to gun for this. Yeah, I did it. I did it back in what was that? 2021 after <laughs> JM. The story, right? It's the, I'm at the Wasatch Warrior. Hey, you're doing Pittsburgh Pro, right? And I'm like, oh, Kim. I have a contract right here. Uh, and he's like, well, looks like we're doing the Pittsburgh Pro. <laughs> then I get to Pittsburgh Pro. And then Steve Weinberger's like, so you're doing the New York Pro? And I'm like, I guess I'm doing the New York Pro. Let's do it. Okay. And, and actually, I was having conversation earlier. I want to thank you, JM, because... Last year, my first Olympia, if you had not just nudged, because he nudges, guys. It's more than a nudge. It's more than a nudge. <laughs> if you hadn't just struck up that conversation with me, I mean, that's what started that trajectory last year. I mean, I did God, oh, like eight or nine shows total last year. Um, but it, y y y <laughs> doing the Pittsburgh Pro, guys, do the Pittsburgh Pro. It's a lot of fun. It's very well run. Um, it did give me that confidence of realizing I belong here. I belong in a top call out. I came in fifth, I think, in the Pittsburgh Pro, then fourth in the New York Pro, and then um, I think second to Ashley. And then I won my first pro show um, later on. So um, thank you for that because you helped give me that confidence. Guys, bodybuilding is a very solo sport, but there is a team that goes, um, that helps support. Well, as I tell everybody, <laughs> I, yes, it is my father's contest, but 
the, the judging panel at the Pittsburgh Pro, everybody judges the Olympia there. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that's what I'm saying, guys. Do the Pittsburgh Pro because you're going to get exposure. And having that feedback, that's where I learned okay, now I have to improve on this. All right, let me, I got that part taken care of. Now I improve on this other part. Okay. Because this is slow progress, guys. You don't, you don't just snap your fingers and you're at the top. It takes that climb and starting with the pits, well, was Wasatch where we had our, you know, the nudge happened. And then I did Pittsburgh and then I was like, oh, I can do this. And sometimes you got to step out of that comfort zone and see what you can do. And I did it. So yeah, I mean, listen, if you want to be the best, you have to compete with the best. 100%. 100%. And again, it's learning from the best as well. You're competing against them, but you're also learning also. Um, so that was 2021. And then I missed this year because, well, I was unavailable. Let's just put it that way. Um, I got really sick late fall last year and was recovering. But yeah, next year, I already know when it's happening. So um, why not? Let's do it. All right, so we can count you in. Kim, we're doing the Pittsburgh Pro in 2023. Oh, boy. <laughs> He's not going to be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. But it is a great show, and I'm very thankful for it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So coming off of your last contest, have you done anything different preparing for this year's Olympia since you've had extra time? Yes. So this year was a shorter season. I got started a little bit late because again, my health came first, needed to recover from what I was going through. Um, so some things that I've done differently. Well, one thing that helped is I didn't have to compete as much. I was fortunate and, and able to earn my Olympia qualification in my third show um, this year um, at uh, the Chicago Pro Wings of Strength. So that was really exciting. Um, but something that I started to do that was different, um, that I'm doing more consistently now is that recovery. So it's like, yeah, guys, go to the gym, lift all the weights, do all the cardio, but don't forget recovery is key here to make those significant improvements. Um, and when you're in a calorie surplus, that's that time. If you're in a calorie deficit, guess what? That's still the time. So, um, I have been doing body work. Um, so myofascial release, just lots of mobility work weekly and also seeing a physical therapist as well, which is, has been very, very, very impactful um, in making some of the improvements that have been asked of me. And not just that, but for the functional reasons. You know, we're athletes and we are an aesthetic type of athlete where we're, we're posing, but we're really not doing much else on stage, right? It's all this nonverbal communication and holding the physiques, but we're athletes. So I want to stay functional. I'm 41 years of age and I need to keep this machine going as smoothly as possible for as long as possible. Okay. But you look at you like you're 21. Thanks. I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> you're going to card me. <laughs> Um, but seriously, it, it's the, it's that concept of we're athletes. We've got to behave like athletes and that all comes into play that recovery. And then of course, focusing on sleep and rest. Um, cause the job in the gym and the nutrition, that's the easy part for me now lately, because I've done this for so long, but it's the slowing down. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard jam. Um, but it's been very beneficial to make the improvements that I've needed to make. And, and let's be clear. She has a real job. I do. So I'm a veterinarian um, <laughs> as well. And it's, it's been finding how, you know, initially it was how to integrate my career in bodybuilding into veterinary medicine. Um, always so, so, so very challenging. And so now we are, you know, fully focused on keeping my health and mental, emotional, physical health and well-being, so that I can continue to be that veterinarian um, in the long term, because Let's be frank, I can be on that stage and I will compete as long as my body will allow me to and as long as I fit the aesthetics that are asked of me. But this isn't, the stage life isn't forever and that's a reality. So I want to keep my body and my mind and my, my soul as good as possible so that I can be my best for my patients and, you know, whoever else I can help with the veterinary world. Oh, that's great. That's great. All right. So do you want to give a shout out to anybody while we're standing here? Oh my gosh, so many. I'm probably going to forget some, but. You know, so she's in prep, she's in prep mode. She's in prep brain. So don't be mad if she doesn't, I doesn't mention you. Too, so we should be good. All right. So firstly, um, the NPC, the IFBB, 
Thank you so much to your dad, to Jim. I was bummed I haven't seen him today. Hopefully, maybe I can. But um, Mr. Jim Mannion, thank you so much for creating this world for us to play in. Um, JM, thank you for that nudge. That's so powerful and significant nudge last year. Um, and of course, the whole family. All of the judges, thank you for what you do. It's a lot of work. Oh my gosh, it's tiring, selfless work. And uh, I appreciate every single judge that I've ever had the honor of, of, of performing in front of. Um, Kim, Kim, Papa Kim, Kim Odo and my entire team in Body Bio, all of my teammates, thank you for your undying support throughout the years. You know how much it means to me. Um, my husband, Chris Wilson, um, the rock that has allowed me to be that little butterfly that has landed and then taken off again. So always encouraging. That's my husband. Always encouraging me to be my best and move forward. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Ah, global formulas. Thank you for keeping the body running, keeping the muscles big, toxic angels. So all these pretty suits you see, it's toxic angels, bikinis, the shoe fairy pro tan. I'm so excited to be seeing everybody at the Olympia in two weeks for Pro Tan, getting everything just right. Um, oh my gosh. My physical therapist, Dr. Ziad, he's wonderful at it. Night physio, keeping me going. He's actually going to the Olympia. Um, Malakas, Dale, thank you so much. This is uh, the person who does my body work. Um, you know, you know. <laughs> and then, um, oh my God, Lean Feast. Thanks for feeding me. I appreciate it. Food is always great. And... Um, uh, I'm sorry if I forgot anybody else, but it's going, it's going. I'm due for food. Soon. Just, just, just know, just know she's thinking about you. I am thinking about you, all of you. Actually, seriously, everyone who has ever dreamt of doing something big, whether it's in bodybuilding or anything else, know that I do this for you. And I'm thankful for you for giving me a reason to wake up every day and do what I do, because I want to show you all Nothing's impossible. Persevere. Persevere. You can do whatever you want to do in life. So I'm excited to take you guys along. Um, next week, I will be competing at the Battle of Texas in Irving, Texas, and then we will be headed to the Olympia. All right. So if you're, if you're in the Dallas area, come see Jessica compete at the Battle of Texas, Battle of Productions. Check them out. And then if you want to see her in the ultimate Bikini Olympia, go to MrOlympia.com. Get your tickets, get your hotel. If you can't make it in person, get that pay-per-view because you won't want to miss this one, right? No, you don't. No, we're aiming for the big stage this year. <laughs> don't miss it, guys. The Olympia tickets are still available. Um, go At least go to the expo. At least get that live stream because it is an impressive production. So I'm so excited to share um, with you all once, once we get that going in a few days here. All right. Well, JM... Dr. Jess. Signing out. We will see you at the Olympia.